Hi, hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. So uh, we will start exactly at 9.15. So at this point of time, we're also live via SPCM YouTube. Uh, it's streaming. So uh, for a while lang po. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, hello, good morning, and peace be with you. I'm John Chiresco, and I'm from the Guidance Center. And at the same time, I'm your moderator for today's webinar. And uh, with me right now are the Guidance Counselor, Guidance Facilitator, Ms. Vanessa Agris, and Ms. Eunice Basilio. And we'd also like to acknowledge the presence of our Academic Services Head, Mr. Samonte Andre, and for our School Principal, Sister Mirna Castante, and of course, for our de dear teachers, and you, dear parents. All right, so one of the services of the Guidance Center is information service, wherein uh, we provide awareness or activities on different mental health topics. And in celebration for the World Mental Health Day, actually it's on October 10, 
we are offering this webinar to you, our dear parents, in order to provide you information about establishing healthy parenting relationship with your children and different parenting tips. Well, for today's webinar, our topic is about building child res resilience. But of course, uh, let us begin our program with our opening prayer. So let us remember that we are in the most holy presence of God and adore his holy name. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you that you promise to be with us always. Thank you that your presence is with us right now. Today we give you our hearts, our minds, and our lives. Come speak your words of life into our beings. And we pray that you would deepen our comprehension and broaden our thinking, transform our understanding of what we are about to study or hear this morning. For your wise counselor, our perfect teacher, and our faithful friend. Thank you, Lord. Mary, our mother and model, pray for us. Saint Paul, our patron, pray for us. Father Louis Chauvet and the First Sisters, intercede for us. May the love of Christ impel us now and forever. Amen. For our Polinian affirmation, mindful, self-directed learners, and role models. I am mindful, self-directed learner and role model, consciously expressing my faith. So again, welcome to our webinar, Dear Parents. And we'd also like to acknowledge the presence again of our SPC sisters, teachers, and administrators who are also watching right now via our uh, SPCM YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your usual support. Now for our introduction of our speaker, uh, I would just like to call Ms. Vanessa Agris, our guidance counselor. Ms. Vanessa. Good morning, everyone. I have the honor to introduce our esteemed resource speaker for this morning. Ms. Sonia Sison Mendoza took her MA at the Ateneo de Manila University in Social Psychology. However, she finished her Master's of Arts in School Counseling at the De La Salle University in 1998, where she took PhD units in Clinical Psychology to hone her skills in counseling from 2000 to 2002. She took her PhD program at Miriam College and finished in 2003. She underwent short studies and exposures at the University of Minnesota and University of Los Angeles Psychology Department and Career Center in 1997 to 1999. She handled training programs with seasoned colleagues at the Psychological Group Company and the Development Academy of the Philippines. She had a short stint in the industry as recruitment and training manager before she went back to practice her career in counseling at St. Mary's College, Philippine High School for the Arts, National Arts Center, as a pioneer and senior psychologist, San Beda Alabang as head counselor for eight years, De La Salle University visiting career and placement office trainer for graduating students, she served at De La Salle University College of St. Benilde as counselor trainer and part-time faculty. For six years, she was appointed as the Guidance and Counseling Center Director at the same university. She served at Philippine High School for the Arts, St. Mary's Academy, Marymount School, and Mahatma Gandhi International School as consultant and still an on-call consultant to some schools. She extended her services to the Career Development Association of the Philippines for two terms, from 2012 to 2015 and 2017 to 2019. 
She was a member of the Board of Directors for two terms at the Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association. She continues to participate in local and international professional development activities. At present, she is an EAP assistant our Employees Assistance Program, Assistant Program and Counselor for the Workplace Options, which is based in Ireland. And she is connected with Intercare as Counselor for PLDT employees and is still holding a private clinic at Bel Air, Makati. My dear parents and guardians, may I present to you Ms. Sonia Mendoza, PhD candidate, RGC, CCOP, CMHFR. Ms. Sonia, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you, Isai. I thought it's going to be a short introduction, Isai, but the profile pala that I gave you is a little bit longer. Anyway, good morning, everyone. It's really nice to be with you today. It's really a blessing that we are together because we're going to tackle a very important topic that will help your children to succeed in life, that will help your children to face a tough world, especially today. We are all together because we have one heart, one mind, to really give our best and lead our children to the help of God so that someday we will not regret that we became parents, that we have exerted all effort to send them to school like St. Paul College. We are all very lucky to have our children experience the quality education that our school can give them. And so we take advantage to be together here and let's help one another to discuss, to point out, to provide insights, uh, to discover more about ourselves and to realize something, what we need to work on more for the best, for the good of our children. So good morning, everyone, again. Um, all right. Uh, can we start? Uh, yeah. In the meantime, the Three things that I would like to request. Number one, it's a gentle psychological contact between me and you. I am hoping that we are aware this is not my program alone, that we are all together, that we participate in our discussion, that if there's any need to add more or to correct or clarify something, you, Please help us participate, be with us in almost all the discussions that we are going to tackle. Uh, number two, so my, my uh, in addition, my style is that I ask questions and I want you to give out your thoughts and feelings about whatever is being discussed that we consider quite important. And then two, um, we would ask you to share with us also your thoughts, especially during the question and answer uh, part of this session. And do not think that, do not be shy. Uh, do not think that what you may be able to to give out, to offer, to contribute. It's something that might not be worthy. For all you know, it might be very important to make our discussion more lively and rich. Uh, then three, in case there might be some areas of discussion or topic, or we mentioned something that might not make you feel comfortable, just remember, that whatever we take up here is something that might be very productive, that might be very helpful, that you will have to bring to your family something very valuable. Okay, so let's start.
Yeah. Uh, just a rundown of our sessions. Uh, we will ask for some expectations so that we can lead our discussion to a point where it is very much needed. Uh, then the presentation of our objectives. There will be group sharing. There will be breakout session. Then uh, a little introduction again. Then we define the topic. Then questions to deliver our minds. Uh, next is we will have to take up the importance of resilience. Then there will be video presentations to enhance our understanding of the topic. Then the discussions during and after input giving. Then there will be some tips or tools, techniques to train your child. Uh, and then lastly, balancing parenting goals and responsibilities. Okay. So next slide. Our objectives, number one, to promote the importance of building resilience. Two, to provide awareness on different ways to build resilience. Three, learn different tools and techniques or ways on how parents can imbibe and model their children. Four, learn ways on how to balance juggling various parenting roles and responsibilities. We'll tackle that in a brief way. Three, um, okay. so next slide. Then there will be questions for workshop. Uh, are we ready, uh, Miss Agris, to how many parents do we have right now or participants? We are 16. There are 16. Okay. Or would you want to? Siguro break out room muna tayo. We have 11 po, please. Ah, 11. I see. So we divide them by two? Is that okay? Or medyo marami yata yung tip of five or six, ano? By three. Is that okay? We just want to listen from them muna. Naku, miss. Wait lang po. Iset up namin yung... Ah, yeah. Ay, hindi pa kami nakaset up ng breakout ah, right. room. For the meantime, siguro we can ask them. Uh, we can ask them. Uh, can we have some of our expectations while we are waiting for Miss Nisai? Sino itong mga parents natin? Pwede bang... Sumali kayo, maybe may you can tell us your expectation. Ano yung mga inaasahan yung mangyari ngayon? Okay, our dear parents, you can put it in the chat box yeah. or you can raise your hand if you want to yeah. Provide your inputs. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, I think Miss Cheryl, uh, she raised her hand. Hi, Mom. Uh, you may open your camera if you will, or turn on your audio for your question or expectation. Thank you. Hello, po. Good uh, morning. This is Cheryl. Good Chelsea. morning. Yes. Yeah, good morning. Ano ko na lang po muna yung camera off ko na lang po muna. Pasensya na. I'm the daughter. I, I'm the a mother of Michiko Shai of um, grade 2. So, ang expectation ko lang din po is on how to be my daughter or our child will be resilient. Kasi syempre, as an adults, parang madali po tayong mag-shift. Uh, kunyari, mm -hmm. pag-working, kung uh, back to work or work from home, di ba? Madali po tayong mag-shift kasi madali nating i-ano yung mindset natin na ay mag-back mag to work ako bukas ay bukas mag-ano ako uh, mag-work from home ako siguro ganun din po siguro sa mga child I want to learn something more na uh, pwede silang maging resilient na uh, whether it's a it's a online class or it's a face to face class madali nilang ma-adapt yung sarili nila madali sila makaka-adapt dun sa situation not just in school but also the things that are happening right now kasi minsan medyo madalian ang ang mga <laughs> nangyayari so yun po madali parang 
kumbaga parang bambu po ba, tama po ba? Yung madali silang mag-sway kung saan yes. dapat mag-sway at madali yes. po silang maging sturdy kapag kailangan maging sturdy. So, yun That's po right. yung expectation ko. Maraming salamat po. Yes, thank you. Totoo yan. Yeah, especially now, there's so many challenges for the kids. So, mom... Yeah. So, Ma'am okay. Sonia, we have also uh, from our chat box so from Miss Maria Adeline Aguirre yeah. Bulala. Uh, according to her, get some guidance on how to help my son and myself to adjust to our generation gap on top of the new normal. So, that's from Miss mm. Maria Ad- Adeline. Yes, yes. Thank you. We'll tackle that later. Meron pa ba? So, kung wala na, ako na tayo sa breakout room. Ready na, John? I mean, sorry, the technical po ah, namin on our side. Hindi pa. <laughs> po na ah, okay. maano yung breakout room. Oo, oo, oo. It's okay. So, ganito na lang. Maybe we can answer these questions. Ay, hindi naman tayo marami. Kaya okay na lang yan. Parang tayo-tayo na lang sa breakout room. Yeah. So, yung iba, uh, kanina may mga nag, nagsabi no, na ano yung expectation sila. And then the others, maybe we can give the floor to the others to let us know. So, what are your thoughts about this topic? Aware ba kayo sa gaano kakalagay ito sa buhay ng mga anak natin? In fact, this is very important also, most especially to us who can be models and who should be models. Kasi ang kukunin ng mga bata yung we, we, don't, we, we do not have enough models around. Importante sa bahay mo. So, meron ba kayong thoughts about this number one question? Parang siguro mga uh, two or three of you may share. Number one, then another group. A small group to share this one. The number two. So, kung meron din yung nagsabi dito sa number one, ito yung number two. Sagutin nyo na rin. May we hear from you? Uh, ano tayo ha, parang kwento-kwento ha, isay lang tayo. So, huwag kayo mahihiya. Uh, gusto niyo bang magtawag ako? Bakang <laughs> matawag ko, administrator? Isay, do you know some of the parents, the participants? You may want to ask them. Ay po, again, you can put it in the chat box or raise your hands if you want to uh, respond to the questions. Uh, probably just one word uh, in terms of the what you know about the term resilience. Ang shy po ang ating mga parents. <laughs> yeah, shy. Don't be shy kasi the more you speak out, the greater you learn. The greater you may be able to discover about yourself and, the, you know, more realization. So we have po from Ms. Uh, Sheryl, uh, Mami Sheryl, uh, Adaptability. And, uh, her thoughts about resilience. And from uh, Mami Edeline naman, uh, resilience means to cope. Thank you po. Thank you. Galing naman ah, kahit na one word lang, no? It, it speaks of what we have in mind about resilience. So it, it, it might be new to others, to other parents. They're so busy, you know, doing a lot of things, especially taking care of the family and attending to their work. Uh, baka 
hindi pa nakapag-usapan niya masyado about sa opisina o sa family or among friends. There's one more insight, I think. There's yes po. More, yeah. Yes po, ma'am. Uh, we have from Ms. Tin Cachapero. So according to her, resilience is being able to handle challenges. So that's according from Ms. Tin. Yes. Thank you. Are there more? So kung wala na, siguro you can go down to number two. According naman po from uh, DJ, it's bouncing back. So that's his idea. Nakakatuwa, no? Kahit na one or two words lang, you can describe what you have in mind regarding the topic. And another naman po from Ms. Maritis Diaz, resilience is equal to never giving up. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay, any more? So kung wala na, let's go down to number two. I think Ma'am Sonia, Miss uh, Maglaya uh, raised her hand. Ay, I don't see it. Ay, na lang bahala magtanong. Oh, po. I yes. only see myself here on the slide. Yes po. Miss Wang, uh, are you here there po? Hi, good morning po. Can you hear me po? Yes po, ma'am. Yeah, can hear you. Hi, good morning po, ma'am. Good morning. Um, number two na po. Tama po ba? Yes. Ah, okay. So, um, as a parent, actually I only have... Uh, uh, one child. So, mm -hmm. she's on her um, early teenage years. So, um, of course, um, I'm trying in this item, um, the way I handle uh, uh, maga, her coping up with the with her problem is um, I'm trying to um, uh, know where they're coming, where, where she's coming from. I'm trying to understand yung generation po nila. So, the uh, kasi syempre iba po yung generation ko. Yes. I'm, I'm already 45 so um, iba yung generation niya ngayon. So what I'm doing is medyo nakiki kumbaga eh, nakiki vibes po ako dun sa generation nila so I could better understand mm -hmm. uh, where they are coming from and at the same time mas madali ko siyang makakausap kasi mas open siya in terms of um, she can easily relay her um, thoughts and emotions. So yung kumbaga wala pong tinatang so that's mm -hmm. uh, the way I can uh, parang get in dun sa kanyang uh, thoughts and emotions so para mas matulungan ko po siya. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, do we have some more? I'm sure, ano, ah, smart yung mga parents ngayon eh. You, you might not have gotten many ideas in raising up children from your parents except from how they treated you, how they raised you, how they molded and formed you. But because you want to be best parents, you will try your best to find out more. Kaya nga nandito kayo eh. You want to learn more. Uh, Ma'am Sonia, we have another from our chat box. So this good, is from good. this is from Miss Tin Cachapero. So according mm -hmm. to her, I do small talks with them, particularly with my 15-year-old. Mm -hmm. I take daily scenarios as an opportunity to teach life lessons. For example, when schoolwork becomes overwhelming, I teach him how to manage mm -hmm. his time online. Ah, good. Yes. Good. Yes. Yes. And to yes. pause when he feels overwhelmed. It's okay to rest, but keep in mind his goals. Our mm -hmm. conversations involves questions like, how do you feel? What do you think you should have done better? And then we process his thoughts together. So that's yeah. according from his team. Oh, very good. Yeah. yeah very good. Uh, we description John later on and when we talk about parenting. So that's good. It's a good practice. 
And according naman po from Miss Cheryl Flores, mm-hmm. talk to my child on how day her day goes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Okay, very good. Uh, your communication, you're, you're sustaining it, maintaining it. Number one in the, the best thing in life in relationship is communication. Okay. Good. Thank you. Meron pa ba? Nana, baka possibly the others also are doing that. Uh, iba naman yung age na ito. Iba yung age namin. So many things are happening, especially sa mga young parents like in your 40s. Dami na rin nangyayari. Marami na rin challenges. Uh, pero ngayon, you will be handling uh, the generation alpha after the generation Z. Ito na ngayon yung iba naman. Ito yung first group. Yung na 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 experience ng pandemic ibang iba sa mga batang ito ito yung mga batang na deprived of uh, communication sa mga kaklase face to face nakulong sa bahay no ang daming mga nangyayari diyan and even parents are really affected by the pandemic uh, nawala yung social life no and it is very important relational Pilipino pa man din. No? And Asians are very good at that. Sige. So, uh, let's move on. Thank you for sharing, parents. Huh? As I was saying, the more you contribute, the more you bring out your thoughts and your feelings, the greater it will help you. Nagkakaroon kayo ng automatic uh, self-realization. Self-discovery, self-realization, And who knows, but uh, very rich in types. Okay, so we define. Uh, teka. Uh, si Ms. Eunice, but baka pwedeng asa na yung ating video. We will watch first. Are we ready? para sa bago natin i-define uli yan to review, uh, it's good to see some um, video presentations. In life, everyone encounters hardships. Some will be big, and others will be small. Whether it's the loss of a loved one, getting laid off, heartbreak, divorce, or even just putting orange juice in the smalling cereal instead of milk, there will be tough times. When these difficult times inevitably arrive, we can either choose to let them swallow us up, or we can choose to keep going and make the best of the cards life has dealt us. Yes, even when there's orange juice in your cereal. This is where a very important skill comes in. Resilience. Resilience is the ability to pick yourself back up and move forward after tragedy or challenges. It's grit, it's determination, it's deciding not to quit, and that even if the worst happens, you'll be okay. But this important skill is not an innate ability. Children are not born resilient, as you could probably tell by their fragility and inability to form a sentence, nor do they naturally become proficient at it as they age. Resilience has to be built and developed over time, which means us adults have to figure out how to get resilient on our own. Luckily, resilience can be developed through mindset shifts, practice, and through healthy habits everyone has the ability to implement. Here are just 10 ways to start building your resilience so you can weather through the hard times life throws your way, orange juice and all. 1. Be proactive. Resilient people are proactive. This means they face their problems head on. They don't let problems fester in the corner, growing larger and larger by the day until it becomes an uncontrollable infestation. Instead, resilient people take immediate action. The next time you encounter a problem in your life, even a small one, force yourself to be proactive in fixing the problem. Rather than spiraling into a storm of negative thoughts about the situation, focus on taking action. Ask yourself, what can I do right now to minimize the damage or fix the issue. 
Two, protect your downtime. Resilient people are well rested. They have the energy necessary to confront their problems. It's very difficult to be proactive about difficult situations when you've been running yourself ragged, fueled by three shots of espresso and sporting a pair of bags under your eyes. So practice resilience by simply setting aside time every day for yourself. You can use the time for self-reflection, meditation, or just for some needed TLC. But by protecting your downtime, you'll have the strength and mental preparedness to focus when issues and challenges cross your path. Three, change your mindset about adversity. One of the biggest fixes you can make in order to build resilience is to stop thinking about adversity as a problem and think about it as a chance for growth. Instead of asking, why is this happening to me? Ask yourself, what can I learn from this? This reframing question is powerful because it distracts you from the pain or frustration of the situation and makes you start looking for an answer to an interesting question. Focusing on how you can grow stronger from a situation is a much more productive use of your brain cells than wallowing in self-pity. Four, build relationships. Resilient people know they can't do everything by themselves. That's where close friends and family come in. Develop strong, healthy relationships with people you trust so you have someone to turn to when you need a shoulder to cry or a cheerleader to celebrate your successes. So take time out of your day to put yourself out there and work on your relationships. You'll be grateful you did when you encounter challenges down the road. Five, focus on the present. An easy trick to develop resilience is simply to practice focusing on the present. Whenever you find yourself bogged down by past mistakes or worried about the future, Catch yourself and then refocus on the present. Mistakes both past and future are not in our control and thinking about them too much only causes additional stress. Plus, if you think too much about the past or future, that's energy and time you could be using towards your present, the thing you can control. So build your resilience up by developing your awareness of your thoughts and feelings and turning them towards the present moment rather than towards things you can't change. Six, know that life isn't fair. Growing up, your parents or teachers might have told you that life isn't fair when you really wanted something you couldn't get. As a kid, it might have been pretty upsetting. But as we get older, the idea that life isn't fair can actually be comforting. Life isn't fair, not for anyone. Every human being on this planet experiences hardship some more than others, but there are still problems in everyone's life. You are not alone in pain. Resilient people realize this about life and they don't dwell on wrapping their heads around the fact that something bad has happened. Instead, they know that bad things happen and they accept them when they come. They know life isn't fair and they don't spend time worrying about it. There's nothing they can do. So it's more important to focus on things with their control. Seven, stay flexible. Resilience may bring to mind images of strong, movable objects, like giant boulders or a weed growing in a sidewalk crack. You may be imagining any number of things that don't change despite what goes on around them. However, this could not be further from the truth. Resilience actually involves a lot of flexibility and creativity. Challenges in your life may cause you to have to pivot, to change direction. This doesn't mean you have to give up on goals or dreams. It just means you may have to reach your goals in a way you hadn't anticipated before. Stay creative with your options in life and you'll be able to navigate through any difficulty. Eight, focus on what you can change. As we've touched on a bit so far, one of the best things you can do to build resilience is to focus only on what you can change. People who constantly blame their environment for their circumstances, whether or not they are right or wrong, definitely never see their circumstances change. However, resilient people who decide that they are the force which can change their own life do see changes in their circumstances. A defeated attitude doesn't help overcome challenges. Only those who rise to the challenge see change and growth. So get rid of that defeatist mindset and accept that you are the one with the power. 
9. Be grateful. Negativity is the greatest killer of resilience. Practice gratitude in your daily life as much as possible. We all know it's far too easy to focus on negative things in life. Our brains are hardwired to do so and keep us out of danger. But if you know you're not in any immediate danger, try shifting your attention to the good things about a situation. This, just like anything, becomes easier with practice. So try writing down three things you're grateful for every day. You'll be surprised at how many things you come up with. And you may end up more content with your life as you see your growing list of reasons to be happy. 10. Practice resilience in the wild. One way to develop resilience is to seek out challenges in your life on purpose. For example, try starting a 30-day challenge, or apply to jobs until you have 50 rejection letters, or even try taking cold showers every day. Heck, you might even end up enjoying it. Putting yourself out there again and again will teach you to not be so afraid of failure and will show you that no matter what, you can make it through a lot of things unharmed. Okay, so thank you for presenting that. Uh, they're done. Um, okay. The first video is more for the parents. At least it gives us glimpses of what resilience is and how are we when it comes to that. Um, so would you like to say something? Parang process muna natin, ano? What have you learned from this very, the short presentation, parang me, because I've seen it before, parang mahaba. And yet, it reminds us of something. Where are we at this point? Would you like to share a little or say something about that, no? Uh, sa chat box, pwede yun. Um, can we process it for a while? It's more for adults. Then later on, be prepared. Uh, Sir John, yung, or you, Miss Eunice, yung ating ano, um, uh, learning resilience, yung pangbata, may ikling may ikling. But for now, may we, may we hear from you? Anyone? Meron na bang pumasok? Anong yung nakita nyo dito? Um, Ma'am Sonia, uh, from Miss Maria Edeline. So uh, according to her, life is not fair. This is something difficult to explain to the kids, that the sun shines for the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. So that's from Miss Maria Evelyn. Yeah. Totoo yun. And it's not easy for the kids, but for all of us parents, we are all adults. Siguro level of acceptance. There's, there's something that maybe it would be nice to talk about also when we have the time. Uh, according to David Rachel, there are five things that we can achieve in life. For now, for us so that we can become more very good models for our kids. Uh, one is that everything changes and ends. So walang forever. Only God's love is forever. Uh, sasagot si, si good morning po uh, uh, sister principal alam ni sister yan no? only God's love is forever. Uh, not not Always we are on top and not always we are down. Not that will end, just like the pandemic. Nung araw nagkanta na influenza, bubonic plague, pandemic yan, pero tumigil din. And maybe soon, that will stop also and we'll be going back to normal. So that's an example of uh, everything. Uh, life is not fair all the time. Pain is how? Oh, pain is normal. No, that happens. Sino hindi nga weather weather? Or is that not all uh, people are loyal and uh, loving? And so all this, no? and then yung not everything that we have planned for, inayos natin naging uh, proactive tayo for our kids or for ourselves, it may not 
come up with the same outcome that we have expected to happen. Yun yung mga ganun. So, when you have the time, maybe you will learn more about that. Okay. Oh, ano pa? I like, I like the uh, what the thought of the, the first parent who shared, mahirap i-explain sa bata, no? But later on, maybe you can, we can discuss their own parenting. Yes po. Uh, Ma'am Sonia, we have another sharer po. Uh, yeah, sure. Miss, Mr. Francis Belen is raising his hand. Mr. Francis. Magandang umaga po. Magandang umaga. Opo, ma'am. Actually, nagustuhan ko nga po yung presentation nyo. Isa po sa napansin ko nga ay um, yung being grateful. Uh, sa amin kasi po, tinuturo namin sa mga bata. I have yes. a 7-year-old and an 11-year-old yes. son naman po. So, 7 years old yung daughter ko, both in St. Paul. So, ang tinuturo po kasi namin sa kanila naman is yung spontaneous prayer. Even before pandemic po, sinusubukan namin. Um, and so far naman po para maayos naman kami at night before we go to sleep we, sleep, we pray together and say things to be grateful for um, nung nag-pandemic medyo dahil nabawasan yung exposure nila sa labas parang dun ko napansin na parang bakit nahihirapan silang mag-sight ka agad kung anong things to take for and then later on dahil ini-encourage lang namin sila na sige isipin niyo kung anong mga bagay na kahit Nandito lang tayo sa bahay, ano yung mga bagay na maipagpapasalamat. It was surprising na ang dami pala nilang naiisip, as simple as yung ulam namin nung araw na yun. <laughs> yung mga ganung bagay na kahit kaming parents nila, ma-realize na, oo nga no, it is something to be thankful for din. Kahit yes. yung mga little things na yan. So, yes. yun po yung mas-share ko ngayon. Salamat po. Salamat. Do you know that because of gratitude, a person can survive? Hindi matu- ma- ma- bababa ang faith because of the gratitude that they see more positive than negative. And that's good to help the children know that, to thank God for daily, for what is there. Saan nila nakita ang Diyos, saan ang mga grasya. Ano mga pagbabasba sa araw-araw. No? That is very good. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am Sonia, we have another po no? uh, yes, from, yeah. our, from our chat box from Miss mm-hmm. Cheryl Flores. So, mm-hmm. protect your downtime. It's beneficial to take time out on the busyness of our day for ourselves. Exactly. Very good parenting. Yeah. Parang hindi matatawaran eh. The time that we give to our children Even if it is short, but when it is quality that the, the children will enjoy our presence, that they learn from us, hindi matatawasan yan. You really have to focus, set aside a special time for them, and let them know how special are they with the time that you are giving them. Okay, good. Thank you for sharing that. Are there some more? What have you learned or... What is it that your thought and how did you feel about the presentation? Meron ba pa? I'm sure many of you might be applying it already to your life. Just want to point out that being proactive is also being prepared for what may happen the next day or next week or next month or next year. Being, just being prepared. Na. Parang being proactive is For one is for earned. Hindi yung matataranta. Uh, proactive versus reactive is you will only do what is necessary for you, what to be best that time when it's happening already. So good. Kaya nga nagiging resilient na ka-ready. Eh. But do not focus much on the future. As sinabi nga, dapat nakapokus kang kanyang. But you do not neglect the future. You do not set aside what happened in the past because you have to draw out a lot of lessons from you. Okay, good. Any more? Okay, yun na yung tama muna sa parents for now. Kasi we are preparing you to enhance further your skills on being good models. Yan yung ine-emphasize ng state goals. I really admire one of the schools that 
I keep my heart in St. Paul. No? Ang dami kong tibig ang kanyang bagay niya, tsaka mga pictures. Okay, so we go now to the resilient theory. Unless wala nang mga tanong or some more, and yung mga meron pa bang idadagdag, we go now to our topic. Ito yung theory nila, which is true, no? Believe it or not, it is not the nature of adversity. It's not how challenging, it's not how heavy the setbacks are, but how important it is for you to deal with it. How do you handle it? As young as when I was a head of one organization in high school, one of the models that I saw, a leader from UE, is telling me, Sonia, it's how you will carry your cross. No? Kahit anong bigat yung dinadaanan mo, ang kukulit ng mga klase mo, ang hirap maningil ng mga quiz, pero paano mo yan i-handle? Ayusin mo yung pagdala mo ng cross, which is true. No? I learned from you. Okay? So next slide. Okay. Ito na yung lesson on resilience. Very, very short lang. I find this cute. Si Ms. Eunice nandiyan, naka-upload na pa siya dyan. Yes po, yes po ma, Carol. Yeah, yeah, okay. Ito naman yung para sa kids. How do you find that? One word lang. Everyone encounters hardships. Some will be big. Anyone? One word or two? A very good presentation for the kids. No? Yung, the material that they use is something very appropriate to give an example of resilience. Yeah. What is that? Good. Jan, uh, ano sinabi niya? Ano uh, from, yes, po, ma'am. Uh, from 
Miss Maria Evelyn. So, good analogy according po kay Miss Maria <laughs> Evelyn. Po. Yeah, good analogy. It's a very good presentation. All right. Uh, sige, siguro next slide. Tapos na yung second video natin. No? So, we move forward. Why is resilient too important? Ano kakalaga yan? It's just, uh, sinabi nyo yan eh, lahat ano. A uh, mind reader might be things that we can repeat again or, you, you know, St. Ignatius, no, of the uh, founder of the Society of Jesus. For him, repetition is very important because as you repeat something, maybe reading, maybe listening or watching, it may give you some more ideas or insights. Uh, what you were not able to see before, it might come back to you or it will give you graph in a golden paper or rapper. If they are resilient, and then, you know, uh, one of you, one of the parents said, or the participants said, bouncing back to all. And the video says, you know, it is stood up rapidly. Yeah. That's good. So next slide. Questions. Sige, ito na nga. Anong nga natin ang sarili natin? Number one, can children be resilient despite dysfunctional families? Um, let's be realistic. This time, there's so many dysfunctional families. Uh, while I was in Lazal, and while... I traveled from one school to the other. We counselors, psychologists, were talking about what led the students or children. Kahit na maliliit pa yan, nade-depress yan, no? And uh, all you know, there are 12 years, 9 years, talaga may be suicidal thoughts. And you know what is suicide? It does not happen for one prior. Many times it can happen. But when we talk about what happened to the students or to kill them who are depressed, um, may mga dysfunctional families and they cannot understand. Uh, there are students, there are kids who cannot talk, who cannot share with the teachers, supposed to be one of the protective factors in their environment. Hindi nila nasasabi. So, being alone, they feel very helpless and they become pessimists. No? So, ganong importante kasi. So, do you believe na can children resilient, be resilient despite the condition at home? Any one or two answers? Huwag kayo mahiya. Kahit walang camera, okay lang. No? So we hear your voice. All right. It's not the chat box. It's not the chat box. Eh. Just say it. Kasama kayo. Your participation will be very important. Para hindi uh, na ako yun. Yes. Yes, ma'am. From Miss uh, Miss Weng Maglaya po. Uh, she's raising her hand po. Miss Weng. Hi. Good morning po ulit. Yeah, good um, morning. Apa. Um, I think I think uh, the answer for this one, based on my personal experience, yes. Yes. Right? Kasi yes. Dito kasi is, of course, it's just one of the community where in the, the children are being exposed to. So their school, there are also friends. So we're in, they can talk to and share their um, yes. common, common concerns, most likely. Ganyan. Mm-hmm. So I think yung, ano po, yung source of um, parang motivation and at the same time, yung parang, um, how they can cope nga po sa kanilang ano is sa kanilang um, problem na na-encounter most likely is hindi lang naman po limited sa families. Kasi ano po eh, um, kumbaga may nai-expose din po sila sa iba't ibang um, community. Right. So, uh, uh, in this case, depende na lang po siguro sa sa bata. On yes. So, may social skills, skills yan, the yes, more. Yes, correct po. And yeah. how, uh, parang how uh, parang strong they are in terms of dealing. Actually, regardless of the age eh. Sometimes, Mm-mm. kahit kasi okay din po sa family, paglabas din po, they they uh, parang adjust din dun sa kanilang set of uh, friends or dun sa kanilang um uh, mga, let's say, mga uh, online, pwedeng online friends po or sa school po. So, hindi din po natin masabi yung, yung exact formula on this eh. 
So, ang sinasabi lang po natin is depende po ito dun sa um, how the, the, the child is being brought up dun sa school and at the same time sa, sa family. So, I think it's more on the continuity. And siguro yes, yung mindset yes. po nung bata. So, yes. dapat, ano po natin, regardless kung nasaan po sila, um, they walk the talk. So, mm-hmm. dapat continuous po yung kanilang mm-hmm. uh, Kumbaga, development. Yes. 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 Thank, you. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, nice. You see? Uh, okay. Uh, we go now to number two. An authoritarian and permissive parents style produces resilient children. What have you heard about that? Kung hindi yan based on experience uh, or based on relative experience or stories, ano sa palagay nyo? Ano lang siya? Um, Tawag dito, uh, okay lang. Tula, pwede. Okay, kung wala pa, tuloy uh, na natin. Iba yung authoritarian and permissive parenting. No? Authoritarian, ito yung very strict. No? Nakapokus lang ito sa doc. Doc is ano ba yung discipline? Ano yung obedience? Kahit na blind obedience, ano ba yung ano ba yung pagkocontrol niya sa bata? No? Um, many things can be said about authoritarian. Yung, yung very strict, hindi yan magbibigay ng chance na makapagsalita ang bata o mga kira. No? Uh, the permissive parent is also very different. Ma- medyo mag- magkaiba yan, pero... The studies, even the, the undergraduate in the LaSalle have found out that permissive parents may not produce much resilient kids, no? Kasi masyadong permissive, ang daming pwedeng pagkakamali ng bata na hindi nakokorek, hindi nakagay. But, uh, that, that will not be permanent, matututo rin ang bata pag nadatata. Are we born with resilience? What do you think? Somehow, <laughs> some authors are saying yes. To some extent, we, it it may be natural, but it is not fixed. It is not stable. Sometimes we win. Sometimes we can stand up, but sometimes we will fall. Now, depending on how, uh, ano yung impact ng fall, pwedeng makapil tayo ng helplessness. So, we really need to have conscious effort to develop. And it's a classing intervention that, provi- that is being provided to you by your school, the St. Paul College, maganda ito. But when it is a continuous program for good parenting, mas lalo tayo natututo. And I congratulate you. Because in almost all schools, not all parents have the time or have the interest to attend to this kind of learning. But, okay, so, hindi siya fixed, pero somehow, we have to some extent. Uh, malakas din ang genes natin, kung very resilient yung both sides mo na parents, uh, parent side, lalong mas malakas siya. But, you really have to do your part also. Next slide. Okay, so yung mga research findings, no? Uh, it's yung transition between primary and secondary schools that will show this is a period of anxiety for many children. Uh, hindi lang ito sa studies ni Galton and Morrison nitong 2000, ever since, ganun yun. And in, when you studied your uh, child and adolescent psychology, it will show no, that the storm and stress uh, years for them in their psychosocial development. Uh, it's yung substantial decline because of the period of anxiety that will affect their self-esteem, their academic motivation and achievement. Sa kanila, when, when the anxiety stays there for more than six months or so, it might develop into mild depression. Habang pinababayaan mo yung ganyang estado, the greater it will pull down the person. The self-esteem, this is very important to all. Do you know that the curriculum in the United States, sa grade school, meron silang program for enhancing their self-worth. 
that's how important it is. Kaya makikita mo, yung mga Amerikano, yung mga puti, masyadong confident, no? Uh, kahit saan sila pumunta, kasi nga natuluan sila ng ganyan. But, uh, pag, in, uh, uh, in the state of anxiety, medyo mahirap yan without the protective factors like the family. Okay, next slide. Family and school, siyempre, the teachers, no, the counselors. Oh, ito rin sinasabi natin. Uh, pa yan. Authoritative parenting style is associated with high levels of resiliency vis-a-vis -vis, uh, or, or yung, yung vice versa niya na uh, authoritarian. Yung authoritative is strict then pero merong leeway for discussion. The parent will listen to the point of view of children. Meron din kayong matututunan sa kanila. A parent who can give way to change. Kung ano man yung rules ngayon na parang hindi sa kanila nakikita nyo mabigat not appropriate for their age, nagbibigay sila. No? Ito yung parenting na nurturing uh, who have the ears to listen. No? So tama ito. Nakakapag-produce sila na more resilient kids. Okay, next slide. Another, children's, yung boosting the resilience in children at least, napaka-importante yan. The school can help the counselor, the teachers. They know that when there is a problem with the kids, regardless of age, when the school is part of it in giving, in addressing it, mas lalong madaling matapos ang problema. No? Uh, I would remember for many years of my, my, my counseling with the kids or with, with the high school and I was a consultant for both uh, at Ed and when I, I handled the college students, it yung napaka importante. Whenever there is problem, a challenge sa bata, pagkasama mo ang parent dyan, pagkasama mo yung, yung counselor, yung teachers, Napakadali kasi you can come up with all this information that is very much needed to address properly the, the conflict or the difficulties. Okay, next slide. Okay. Ito yung mga key characteristics of resilient children. Uh, when I was taking notes, when our professor from UP was lecturing us at Miriam College. I, I was majoring then at Child and Family Studies. Pinag-uusapan namin to. Then recently, last night, I saw na part na na-upload na rin sa Google. So some of those things that I would present to you can also be found in Google. So yan, being competent. You, you know what, what that means. Confident. No? Connected to people around. Ito yung mga social skills ng bata that we need to enhance. We need to help them. But if we have to model, do they see their parents connecting? Important rin yun. Kasi what they see to parents, they, they follow. Their character. You know, the more they feel, the more they experience uh, sadness because of what happened maybe in school or at home, the greater with proper guidance, nakakabil ng character. Then, are they contributors? Uh, I don't know if you have seen a video that says what mothers do not like about their children when they pick them up in school. Merong video na pin pinakikita doon. Naiinis yung mga different mothers ano, to, when they, they touch their children. Nakita lang dumi-dumi na yun kung puro puti. Yung parang para bang yung nasa uh, TV na uh, yung, yung pinopromote advertisement ng sabon, ganon, ganon sila kadumi, no? But you know, nag-change ang heart sila, nang pinapagilitan yung kanilang mga anak, nag-change ang heart, as soon as they have found out, ewan ko, parang binidyo yata ito eh, na nakita nila yung anak nila while passing by, maybe going somewhere sa canteen, or sa chapel, or in the classroom, they saw the, the cleaner of the school na bagsak niya sa kanito niya lahat ng mga pasok niya. And then isa-isa silang tumulong. Eh, puro putik na yun. Ano? Nag-face ang heart yung, yung parents. And this is one thing to show them na yung contribution nila will help 
enhance the self-worth of the kids. Like, tumutulong sila sa mga klase nila. Baro nagugutong, hinatian nila ng pagkain nila. Able to cope. So that's, ano, bouncing back. And being in control of something. No? Like, choosing between doing my assignment or laro muna. Lalo na ngayon, very tempting yung mga game show, no? Mga mobile legend. Nakokontrol niya sa pilihan. Tapusin ko muna to so I can make my mama, my parents happy. So next slide. Yeah. So, ano yung main factors na nakakontribute? Parents will help them to come up with realistic plans. Yung doable, no? attainable. No? Being able to carry out those plans. Nakikarry out ba yun? And then, being able to tell them also that, you know, it's good job. Kahit hindi natapos na, pero nag-start, pinilit niyang magawa. Then, being able to effectively manage your feelings and impulses in a healthy manner. Self-control. Okay, next. Having good communication skills. Ayan. Yun sinasabi kong napaka-importante. You know, it's the difference between the technical communication skill, no? Yung what, ah, marunong ka sa grammar, marunong kang mag-express ng sarili mo in English or in Tagalog or in any other language. Iba naman yan. No? I mean, this is a good psychological communication skill. You know how to listen. You know how to speak how, what you feel, what your thoughts are. Kahit medyo mali, uh, tuturuan nyo sila kung paano mag-present. Hindi yung mayapang ba na tala mo tama sila lagi. Tuturuan nyo on how to say it also. Maybe you can use tentative words to say, uh, Mama, did I hear you right when you said this? O paano yung chance siya para makorek? No? Uh, paano tuturuan nyo sila ng tentative uh, wordings on how to present their thoughts? But it is nice for parents to always encourage them to share. Ano yung nasa itik nila? Ano yung nararamdaman nila? Rather than always share sa classmates or friends, mag-gigisi sila, group chat, pero hindi nila nakuha talaga yung ano ba yung substance. Now, having confidence in your strength and abilities. Yeah. Nasa sa bahay din yan. Kung paano nyo encourage, show them that so that they can be confident with their giftedness, their talents, their abilities. What they did not have yet, they can develop it to the help of parents and teachers. Okay. Next slide. Good news yan. Okay. Hindi siya innate, no? Pwede siyang matutunan. Okay. Next. Ito daw yung three pillars of resilience. Uh, five pillars. Uh, when I saw this, yung self-awareness, which is true, no? knowing yourself more, hindi minsan tayo natitigil. Yung, yung psychosocial development natin, even at this age, we need to be aware, we need to discover more about ourselves, much more for the kids. Uh, yung mindfulness should be number one for me because in mindfulness, it uh, daming benefits, no? Uh, you, you know, the importance of self-care, positive relationships, and then the purpose in life, purpose of doing what else, purpose of what you are wishing to happen. Next. Okay. Ito na yung building resilience in children. Technique one. How much time do we have? Uh, what we can do here is this. Just read it, and then I need not explain until you ask me. Pwede ba yun? Or until you want to explain more or say something about that. Making connections, sasabi na natin kanina. Two, it's obvious. Daily routine. Something that you can get used to with the family, with your children. I mean, daily routine that is important. Daily routine of taking the snack or taking quality of food, good for the health. Focus on things child can control. Ano yung makokontrol? Can you give me an example? Kanina, medyo nabanggit ko na yan. But think about what is it that your child can control at home? And in school. Alimbawa, controlling self to go with 
some classmates that you know are bullying others, you, know, you can control them. Uh, sometimes um, saying bad things, you can control that. You know? uh, yun lang ang pag-usapan niyo sa bata. Then self-care. Okay, next slide. Yeah, goal setting. As young as they are, you can set the goal with them. Kasi ninyo sila, ano ang importante sa school? Ano ang importante dito sa bahay? Ano ang kailangan natin marating? Then nurture a positive view. We will talk about that later. Uh, in a more ex extensive manner, lalo na pag present natin yung uh, Martin Seligman on the positive psychology. Ayan. Number eight is also almost the same. Look for opportunities for self-discovery. It will not uh, stop, lalo na pagka nasa high school and college and preparing to uh, look for them. Then acceptance. Uh, David Richo is saying that the things that we cannot change, but once we are able to accept it, then we become happy. Depende sa level of acceptance. May mga bagay na hindi natin talaga makokontrol, makakulong ka. Like pandemic, like, uh, alimbawa, um, difficulties of life right now when everything is really uh, going up. No? Uh, walang mura ngayon, lahat mahal. Hindi, uh, parang ayaw na tayo pakainin. Okay, next slide. In technique number two, things parents do to make exceptionally resilient and successful kids. Ito yung mga ginagawa nila. I think you can model this also, or you can enhance further the skills for this. Let's read it. And then if you have questions, we'll tackle that. Culture of striving and excellence. Um, yun lang, no? Be aware of what kind of parenting you have. Uh, ingat lang. It's better to be authoritative rather than authoritarian. Uh, baka naman sobrang pilit na magre-rebel din na yung mga bata. Depende yan. Then it is more friendly manner ang pagsabi or pagtakil or yung kwentuan is time. Sometimes in the table you can say, oh, uh, next would be IV to share a uh, short group lang. Now maybe related to the topic that you want to take up that day. And now we talk about resilience. So what is resilience? Bouncing back. Okay, can you give me a short story about that? You will be nurturing. You will be helping the kids to be more creative and innovative. No? And uh, strengthen their imagination. Next slide. Okay, self-confidence. Believe in themselves. You know that. Hindi ka maniwala sa sarili mo, sino pa maniniwala sa iyo. Ang dalas mong magpapalpak dyan when wala kang self-worth. Uh, self-worth is very important to talk about for the parents to know. There are three uh, categories ng self-concept. No? Self-concept is the conscious or unconscious perception about yourself. Uh, there are three things no? uh, offered by author. One of those authors that I read, you know, rin niya sa another author is Ernest Stan. No? He was saying something about self-image. Uh, we are all, including children, who take a look on themselves regarding their, their, their abilities, their abilities, their gifts, kung magaling sila tumanta, magaling sila pag-growing. Uh, ano sinasabi ng mga tao sa kanya? That's the self-image. self image self uh, self-confidence more on the abilities, the capabilities. What are they capable uh, of doing? Maka magaling sila sa math, magaling sa reading comprehension. So yun ang i-reinforce natin. And then the other one is self-esteem. The more you love your children, the other ways of showing how you love them, the greater they can show that to others. They can exhibit that. One author, one of those things that I have read, and learn. Pagkulang sa pagmamahal ng bata, hindi niya na-display, hindi niya naramdaman na experience. Paano niya mataparamdam yun sa iba? Now, that's a uh, food for thought. Five, they are patient. When kids are questions, ask questions. Okay? Yun na nga. 
uh, the authoritative parents will listen. And then sometimes they pick up. And then it's a good idea. Tapos lagi pang kahaba yun at lagi maganda na tuto ang bata. They promote early specialization. Ano ba yun? Uh, I don't know if some of you would know the Clemenia family, the Salazar family in Bicol. Nako, lahat sila nag i standout. Kasi ang parents niya paragin yun ang tinuro sa kanya to excel. In whatever way, whatever uh, projects they have and in school. Hanggang sa naging college, hanggang naka-PhD lahat sila, galing. Pero ano, it's an authoritative way of parenting also. How they nurture their things. Then seven, they encourage competition and improvement. Na, na, hindi ka palaging mananalo ngayon. Pwede kang matalo, but you learn lessons. May can improve further. Kung halimbawa, tatlong beses ka natalo, tatlong beses ka rin maraming matututunan. Ano ba yun? Ito yung fit, no? That, no, no retreat, no surrender. Tuloy-tuloy, hindi hindi titigil. I don't know if you are watching yung weekend sa today, yung Flower of Evil, uh, si Pitolo Pascual, may grip, hindi titigil hanggang hindi nahanap kung sino ang salarin. Anyway, that's just one example. Next slide. Mindful. Mindfulness. Kaya nga ito yung pinaka-importante. Mindfulness is paying full attention to something. Slowing down to notice what the child is doing. Matutruan daw natin sila niyan. Uh, we, we, we were doing that before. When I was a consultant at the Philippine High School for the Arts, when we were teaching uh, young breeds of artists, tinuruan namin sila ng mindfulness. Okay. Uh, next. So, ito yung paano mo matuturuan. Mindful snack is merong intention to eat the snack and may attention and nire-release niya kung ano yung masarap na hinanda ng ng mama, no? Uh, minsan yung papa, without the mother, kung nag-o-op, the OFW. Uh, the simple thing here is this, uh, you know what is breathing technique, ano? Tinuro na siguro yan ng mga counselors okay. nila. Yeah? Okay. Uh, you know what is breathing technique? You can teach that to, the, to, to your kids. Yung simple thing that you will relax, sit down, sit on the floor, Uh, nakalin kayo yung likod ninyo and then tama yung hindi naka-slow and then you tell yourself that your hands on the lap open kasi may energy na uh, going around and don't do sa quiet place and then you can tell yourself feel relaxed. O, kasamaan mo yung mga anak mo mag, mag, magre-relax kayo lalo na pagkatapos ng school tapos ng exam tapos ng puyat no? napagod sa traffic uh, then you can say at yung habang nagbe-breathing kayo, uh, you know, some of my friends and doctors would want to start it sa diaphragm. Uh, y- yung breathing technique niya is that uh, once you are relaxed, you will count one. May rhythm siya to follow. Two, three, four. Baka hindi kaya na anak mo ng three or four or five. Then pause. Count one, two. Pag kaya lang na hanggang two or three, Okay, sa simula, simple. And then, uh, start again. Kung pinalalaki mo yung diaphragm mo habang nag inhale ka, nag-exhale mo na uli pagkatapos ng rhythm na nag ka. And then, count again. One, two, three. Kung yun lang ang kaya ng anak mo. Then, inhale na naman. No? Sa, yung, yung sa dibdib naman, ang palalakihin mo. Uh, habang lumalaki, you never realize it helps you uh, na, na lulusin up ang muscles. Kung mapapansin nyo mga parents, sa pagod nyo, sa stress ninyo, at tumitigas yung mga muscles. No? Pero pagka kinagawa nyo ito, how many times during the day, especially when you're tired, when you're facing something uh, difficult, when you do this, makikita nyo mag, mag, na... na na lulusan up ang 
hindi nyo mamapansin kagad no, ang muscles. And then the biochemical in the brain will help flow naturally the way God made it to be. So, pagka nakatapos na kayo ng breathing techniques two or three minutes, ngayon, go now to the net, you know, mindfulness. That, that's one. No? Uh, parang sabay siya. Habang nag-breathing technique, it's slowly, hindi ito bigla-bigla. No? Uh, you can start making yourself with your child feeling, sasabihin mo, uh, nararamdaman ko yung buhok ko na nasa amit. Nararamdaman ko kung mainit yung amit. No? Uh, nararamdaman ko kung mahaba ang buhok ko na nakapatong sa shoulder. Nararamdaman ko naka ano siya sa tenga na medyo naka uh, dampi, no? Nararamdaman ko dito sa baba, sa shoulder yung touch ng cloth. Slowly, slowly kung kung nakasando lang siya or naka uh, ano tawag nila doon, spaghetti, nararamdaman mo yun. Sa baba, slowly sa dibdib. Kung teenager na yan, nararamdaman niya kung nakabrapa siya. Uh, and then sa baba, slowly, slowly. And then Uh, tell them to feel uh, ano yung gentle wind. Baka nakabukas yung inyong bintana kung may gentle breeze, nararamdaman ba nila yon Or naririnig ba nila yung small sound from afar and at a distance or dito sa naririnig nila? Parang don't be disturbed, just listen, just feel it, ano nararamdaman mo. Then go down slowly sa, sa lap ano nararamdaman mo, then sa knees, kung naka-pants, naka, 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 uh, nararamdaman mo ba yung nakadikit? Tuhod mo yung iyong uh, pantalon. Pababa hanggang sa kung nakapaa ka ba o nasa yung flooring ba na matigas, all those. Slowly, slowly doing that will help you be more mindful. Yun lang yung start na pwede ko magbigay sa inyo. So next slide. La, okay. So this is technique number four. Imagine you take two dogs and put them in two different areas. You shock the first dog and you give him an option to escape. He tries to escape, he's successful, and he gets away from the shocks. The second dog, however, you put in a place where no matter what he does, he cannot escape the shocks. He soon figures out that there's nothing he can do. He gives up and he'll just sit there and accept the shocks. Now you take these two dogs and put them in two new areas again, but this time they can both escape. The first dog who had learned that he was able to escape will get out of there like usual. But the second dog will just lay there and accept the shocks, even though in this new environment he could just escape. This is what is known as learned helplessness. And you probably know people who act like the helpless dog. The opposite of this is learned optimism. Learned optimism is basically the idea that you can learn to be optimistic and positive and happy. You can cultivate these things. And this is exactly what Seligman was trying to do by running a workshop. The results of the workshop were promising. 32% of the students in the control group had a moderate to severe episode of depression in contrast to 22% of the group that was in the workshop. Also, 15% of the controls had an episode of generalized anxiety disorder versus only 7% of people who took the workshop. They also found that it was the change from pessimism to optimism that caused the prevention of depression and anxiety. And these studies are great, but even when I look at my own life, happiness, positivity, optimism, these are the things that I've had to learn and that I have to keep cultivating. When I was a kid, I hated my life. I was constantly depressed and anxious. I had suicidal thoughts for the majority of my childhood, but that's all gone now and my life just keeps getting better. But this is something that you need to put effort into. This is something that can be learned. So now let's look at the benefits of optimism. Optimists on average achieve more, have better overall health, and just lead a more enjoyable life. 
Pessimists, on the other hand, are more likely to give up, are more likely to suffer from depression and just lead a not really enjoyable life. And the big difference between pessimists and optimists comes from their explanatory styles about whether things are permanent, pervasive, and personal. So let's say you walk up to a girl and you just get humiliated and rejected. If you're a pessimist, you'll think that it's permanent. I'll never be able to attract a girl. If you're an optimist, you'll think that it isn't permanent. There are going to be plenty of girls who like me. If you're a pessimist, you'll think that it's pervasive. I'm just not an interesting person. If you're an optimist, you'll think that it isn't pervasive. It was just one isolated situation. It doesn't mean that I'm not interesting. If you're a pessimist, you'll think that it's personal. I'm ugly. Of course she's going to humiliate me. If you're an optimist, you'll think that it isn't personal. Well, she might have been in a bad mood. And I've seen this so many times. If you have a pessimistic explanatory style, you're going to have your soul crushed. Every single friend I've had who was good with women always had an optimistic explanatory style. So optimism is much more helpful to you than pessimism, but you also need balance. Just like with everything else, you need balance. Otherwise, you can get really delusional and actually end up hurting yourself. Imagine if you have a really bad business idea and you're just a naive optimist. The business isn't going anywhere, but you say, well, this isn't permanent. And you keep wasting resources on a stupid idea. You've put in six months already and it hasn't gone anywhere and you say, well, it's just this part of the project that's slow, but the project as a whole is amazing. Or you try to get support and no one wants to go along with your terrible idea and you say, well, they were probably just in a bad mood today. I don't know if I would call this person an optimist or just an idiot. The biggest problem with optimism is when it's not balanced because you might end up not taking responsibility when you need to. So I would absolutely recommend being optimistic, but at the same time balancing it out with pessimism. Or not even pessimism in my opinion, but just simply realism. All right. Um, you see, there's a difference between that was shown, that was discussed you know, in the presentation. When we are not able to address pessimism, then we become helpless in many setbacks. Nowadays, I have many clients who are anxious and depressed. You can see that they were never able to learn that, to, be, to bounce back, to stand up despite the use. Uh, their explanatory style is not as good as the optimist. Would you remember uh, the story about the twins? Yung uh, isa e pessimist, yung isa optimist. When the father decided to give them uh, Gifts because they will be celebrating the birthday soon. It, ano ito ka, in-study rin naman ito. Uh, the, the other one, na, uh, wearing blue, no? uh, was given a lot of points. No? Tapos nandun siya sa room niya. Then the other one was given uh, a horse manure, no? a horse dung, na nandun sila sa, sa kwarto niya, kanya-kanya. The first one that he visited, nung nakita niya yung anak niya na ang daming laruan, iyak nang iyak, hindi ka rin masaya. Because the explanatory style of a pessimist is that so, sa dami niyan, may iinggit lang yung mga kasi ko, mga kaibigan ko. Sa dami niyan, ang dami kong pag-aaralan. No? Hindi ko alam kung paano. And then sa dami niyan, hindi akong iwanan ng mga schoolmates ko, ng mga kaibigan ko, kasi wala naman silang ganyan. Iba yung reasoning niya. Then, then the, well, the father was sad when he left the room. Tinignan niya muna yung isa rin with the horse manure na nilagay niya sa kwarto na malapit sa bed. No? Then when he saw that, 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 that wearing yellow uh, shirt naman itong isang itambal, nakita niya masaya. Bakit? Bakit ka masaya? Eh, hindi ba bantok niyan? Iba yung, ano yung dumi ng horse. Sabi niya, well, that means there's a pony around. And I want to see that pony, no? Yung, yung ganon. So that's the, an example also sa kids ng optimism. 
Now, yung explanatory style that we are saying, uh, next slide, um, we will do that further. Okay. Ah, okay. Yung techniques, no? Um, technique number four, we know that already. Equip your child with tangible emotional support, no? Nakikita uh, nyo, uh, helping someone. Uh, well, of course, number five, being the best role model. So, okay, next. Yeah, teaching the realistic opinion. When I was in Ateneo, taking up my MA, that was the first time I got hold of, you know, my theories, findings, experimental psychologist, you see uh, Seligman, Martin Seligman, who is the author of Positive Psychology. He was saying something like, when we are not, a, uh, you know, all this stuff are blocking us to grow further when we are not able to stand up when we feel more helpless, when there's no one to teach us, to guide us, to pull us up, no? we, we na, na, reinforce yung being pessimist. No? Uh, not so good in bouncing back. Mabaga. No? So, but then, merong positive reframing. Refrain, challenge your child to seek positive ways of evaluating an event. Uh, then selective focus, teach them to uh, focus primarily on realistic thoughts and events. Ano yung uh, that will lead them to, you know, be, uh, come up ideas for a good solution? Yung realistic optimism, may mga, uh, be, be, uh, next slide. Tignan natin yung kanilang explanatory style. Dito sa number three, avoiding catastrophizing. Yung para sa kanila, oh really, it's bad. Uh, parang wala akong pag-asa. Parang I will always fail. You are, you are familiar, lalo na yung mga counselors, ano, that our students would always say, walk through nila ang math, na kahit anong aral nila, lalagpak sila. That's catastrophizing. No? Uh, hindi, they catastrophize ninyo yan. With the kind of explanatory style that you will do. No? Then using humor, one thing a while, alam mo, Parang ang humor yata dapat gifted ka para marunong ka magpatawa. But when you read more, you want to learn more, you can entertain your children, they would like to go more with you. Mind you, when they're growing a little bit more, they will start detaching themselves from parents at malulungkot ka kaya take advantage now. And, you know, uh, enhance the culture of making them Parang enjoy your presence, enjoy the presence of family, especially when you go out, eat, eat dinner outside. Uh, teaching an optimist, et na. We go to, uh, ano itong explanatory style? Okay. Uh, sige. Um, next slide. Ito na yun. Um, Alice, no? Meron siyang methods of counseling or methods of helping uh, clients. Yung kanyang ABC model, it's very helpful. Now, for the parents to know that, apply it to yourself and to your kids. You can even share that with your husband, no? with the family. Uh, the ABC model stands for a uh, capital A is the event. Or what is the adversity? Ano yung nag-pop out na sometimes you do not expect it happens. So, taranta ka dyan, lalo na kung di ka proactive, no? Then you will do something to address it. As soon as you can, you will do that before the, the fire will spread out. No? Uh, yung letter C is, ano yung response mo doon? The meaning that you put into it, the perception of how things are, will, will uh, lead you to your response, to your reaction. Uh, halimbawa, one student would say, uh, I, tapta, let, let's look at the explanatory style niya. Would it be permanent if my parents are working abroad? Wala siya rito. Nahirapan ako. May mga problema ako sa bahay, hindi ko masabi. I only need my mom or my father to share. Eh, wala siya dito. So, I share it with friends, with my classmates. They, you know, they, they teach me what to do. Pero, 
wala, lalo daw lumala. And I need my parents. So ano yung, ano ngayon yung explanation niya regarding that? Uh, would that be, would it persist? Would, would it always happen to me? So ang tanong dito, come up with several beliefs. Come up with some explanation. Kung pessimist ka, you'll say, ay, wala nang pag-asa yan. Maliit pa ako, di pa pinapanganak. Wala na yung parents ko. O kung lalo na, kung both, no? Uh, wala na yan, wala nang pag-asa yan. So, iba yung nagiging outcome, yung effect sa kanya. At saka sa development ng cognitive, ng cognition na iiba, no? Uh, the ar ar architecture of cognition, uh, maapekto nga. And so, uh, that's the pessimist. It will be forever na nandun yan. Kasi baby pa ako or hindi pa pinapanganak, nandun na sila. So, wala. Uh, helpless. Uh, then, pwede rin namang temporary. Pwede kung, kung medyo may pagka... Kung pessimist ka, sasabihin mo, it's always like that. But uh, an optimist would say, ah, babalik din yan. And my parents or my mom said, two more years and she will stay here for two years. May mga gano'n ang style niya. Uh, is it pervasive? Naapektuhan ba ang buong uh, household? No? Uh, naapektuhan ba yung school life ko? Uh, yung mga gano'n, how pervasive? Gaano siya nakaka-apekto sa mala? Is that global? Or it is more specific na hindi, ako lang naman yan. And it's, I think, kung, kung na they develop na yung optimism siya so the, the kid will say, ako lang to and I think life will not be permanent. Uh, ganito lang to ngayon. Okay, let's go to another example. The optimist child, it, 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 ito yung nakakautap ko ha, uh, nasa high school ito. Sabi niya, nahihiya ako miss na nagpapagod ang magulang ko, nagpapakahirap, napupuyat. Sometimes inaapit sila, sinasaktan sila, hindi lang nagsasabi. But you can see it. Nakita mo yung mukha nila na parang napapaiyak, namimiss ko, nakikita ko rin na naghihirap sila. Grabe yung homesickness, no? So, I, the only thing that I could uh, give them is to make good in my school work. O ito yung mga bata ngayon na nag-prosper. Nag, nag, uh, no, nag- uh, Salutatorya nito ng graduate. Kasi yan lang daw ang iaalay niya nakapalit. You can see the optimism of this child. No? And then alam niyang temporary yan. Hindi yan magtatagal babalik din because yung family namin ang love niya and priority. Pina, pina, pinapahalagahan niyang mabuti ang family niya. And then how pervasive uh, yung ibang kapatid ko okay lang sa kanila and then I think I'm okay also because my father explained how important it is that we have to go to school. Nagtutulungan kami, kulang kasi talaga, nangungupaham pa kami, yung mga ganon. No? Then how specific? Kunti uh, lang. Kami lang naman ang naapektuhan. Okay, so yung explanatory style na example. Another style is, the, the, the parents who are modeling would show them there, there could be many other reasons. Ano yung mga beliefs mo to conquer? Uh, for instance, um, bumagsak siya sa exam, no? final exam, and mathematics yung. Ang pessimist is, wala eh, talagang ang bobo ko dito eh. Sabi rin ng aking, minsan may parents na gano'n na nakakalimot, no? na masyado na silang na-stress out, natasabi na, ang hina mo talaga, wala ka ng pag-asa, may, may gano'n, no? may na-encounter din akong parents na. Uh, so, gano'n siya, parang permanent na. No? And then how pervasive, naku, uh, baka mamaya, papano ito, baka, baka hindi akong karating ng college, baka hindi ko mapili yung talagang gusto kong gawin uh, para makapag-develop ako ng aking career. Yan yung pessimist. The, 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 the optimist would say, there are many beliefs. No? Halimbawa, she would uh, say, let, let's add about explanatory style. Pwede rin namang uh, locus of control. No? The locus of control says may internal and external explanation ang bawat isa sa atin. When the, when the kid says 
na akong pag-asa bumagsak ako ako. Ayan yung explosiveness. Exter, sa kanya, internal yung pagkabagsak niya. Nasa sa akin mo ba ito bumagsak? The, the optimist would say, teacher factor eh, hindi masyadong napaliwanag sa akin, hindi ko naintindihan. No? I will do it better next time. I will show it that I can make it. No? Uh, I remember my my uh, niece abroad, when she was here, kung magbasa yun ng libro, nakaka-seven books a day. May, no? When she moved to, to Canada with the family, ayaw maniwala ng teachers dun sa book review na sinasabit niya. So what she told, you can see yung kanyang explanatory style and your, yung kanyang resiliency. Tinanong niya yung teacher, can you give me more books to read? I will give you my, I will submit to you my book review in a week time. Ang daming binigay ng teachers. Nagulat yung teacher. Binigay niya in three days lang. And then, you know, my, my niece, uh, modesty aside, at 28, almost two years ago, she defended with excellence her dissertation, PhD at 28. Gifted eh. Pero, the parents are quick enough to enhance further. Now, yung resilience niya, nakatulong, no? Uh, go back to the one who failed the mathematics. If you are optimist, you go back to yourself. Internal control siya. Sabi niya, eh kung meron naman siyang aptitude, nakikita niya, sinabi ng counselor, ang tataas ng uh, entrance exam niya, mataas siya. So that's aptitude, internal. He believes in it. No? Uh, so it cannot be temporary. It's always there. I can go... Uh, and study further. Pwede pa ako mag-MA someday or PhD if I want to teach. And then how pervasive, yun na, global yung thinking that I can pass, I can go further. No? Then it's specific, it's me. I can control it. If I want to study, mas lalong maganda. If I don't, naintindihan ko naman, it's okay. But I ask God, huwag naman sanang maging bloated yung mind ko, na magiging mayapang ako. Ganon. Part of teaching the, your kids to be humble is also very important. Yeah. Okay. So, next. Meron pa ba? Yan. Uh, ang gagawin lang ninyo to teach your kids, come up with many explanations. Talibawa yung isa, inechepwera siya ng grupo. You know, that is big deal to the students, ha? to the kids, to the teenagers. Merong mga nadedepress. And then they kill themselves because nahiwalay sila, ayaw na sila isama sa grupo. When a parent is smart enough to teach optimism, resilience, you can tell your child, come up with other beliefs like bakit hindi ka sinama. Probably when you left, okay ka nung malis ka, kung dating mo rito nilalagnat ka, baka naramdaman nila may sakit ka. That's one, one belief that you can give example to your kid. No? Another thing is maybe... They want, they want to win the game and they need only those who are expert or really very much well-trained and experienced in football. Yung mga ganon, no? Come up with more explanations. Pag na-convince yung bata, no, natututo na siya, ang dami niyang, hindi yung puro mga uh, parang nakaka-downgrade sa self-worth niya. No? Okay. And it's not always, dun sa locus of control, it's either internal ang explanation mo. Uh, marurong, mar, may mga marurong na bata eh. eh hindi masyadong na-explain it teacher eh. Pag-aralan ko to, pupunta ako sa another teacher so can explain better. No? Yung mga ganun na ang kanyang solution. So tama nga naman. Yung external yung tilo niya. But yung kanyang, pag sinabi niya, na nanalo ako or pumata ako with high grades, it's because I studied aside from my aptitude that the counselor and my parents are telling me. No? Uh, and then, how specific? It is, it is because of me. It's not because of the external factor that I am learning. And then, dun sa uh, whether it will be stable, alam niya, magiging permanent yun because you have that giftedness in you. So, nasa sa parents din yung to show uh, para rin magkaroon sila ng confidence. Okay, so next slide. Okay, yun na tayo. Pero before that, uh, would you like to ask questions? 
meron bang tanong? Mayroong uh, remarks? Pwede din gamitin itong reflection questions. What hit you most? Ano yung striking? Where else did you learn more? You, you make reading all together. Magagamit nyo yun. Pwede yung dalawa lang. Nagsasaksid na yung parents. Basta modeling is very important. We cannot teach what we do not have. Tayo din, we continue to learn more and enhance no? our what we have. Okay, questions? Meron bang tanong? Meron bang uh, magdadagdag? Or magbabawas? Uh, third time, I noticed we only have few parents here. Sayang, maybe they are in YouTube, ano? Yes po, ma'am. Uh, others are watching via uh, our SPCM YouTube account. So it's a streaming po. They're watching po there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a very important to eh. Nakasalalay dito yung future ng mga bata. How they will succeed, especially now. You know that it's very difficult to find a job. Ang daming tablets. Ang daming, lagi na lang, no? sinasabi ng industry, parang kulang ang qualification ng mga bata. Parang hindi sila satisfied. No? So we do not depend on the school to give all. Talagang partnership talaga to. Parents will have to contribute more. So, yeah, mas maganda yung mga nandito. No? Or if, if there are comments, there are Questions, how did you find the, the lecture? Nakakatulong ba? Uh, Ma'am, uh, Miss Wang Maglaya po is raising her hand. So, oh, yeah. Miss... Yeah. yeah, just take it ha, kasi I don't see it. Yes po. Miss Wang? Uh... Hi po. Ash, uh, uh, hi. Uh, po, um, konting sharing lang po based on, ah, yes, uh, based yes. on my um, personal experience. Though, again, as mentioned, isa lang po kasi yung anak ko, so wala akong other point of comparison. So, um, I always, I always encourage my child po kasi to do her best, pero never compare herself to other, to, to the accomplishment of other uh, uh, students. Kumbaga, um, ang kumbaga, ang magiging competition niya is yung sarili lang niya. So, which means she will be uh, parang doing more or improving herself but never comparing uh, her accomplishment to the accomplishment of other students. Kasi kung ikukumpara niya po yung, yung kanyang uh, let's say academic dun sa iba pong students, never po siya mag-i-improve on, mag on her way kasi parang ang, ang magiging challenge niya is to beat other students. Kung baga, I always uh, tell her na ang competition mo lang is sarili mo. So which means, ikaw yung mag encourage sa sarili mo to do more or to improve yourself. So, mm -hmm. so far, nakatulong naman po siya. Mm -hmm. So, ano eh, um, mas, mas nakatulong po sa kanya in terms of her education na siya mismo po yung may kusa in mm -hmm. terms of um, all aspect po ito, uh, academic or personal po niya, um, yung socialization, etc. So, Um, and the sharing po, baka lang po makatulong din po sa ibang uh, parents. Yes, yes. Thank you po. Thank you. Itadagdag mo na lang siguro that when the others are doing very, very well, then pwede mo sabihin na magiging source din sila na inspiration to you. Yes. Thank okay. you po. Thank you. Meron pa ba? Uh, what do you think about the intervention that we are offering to you? Or what have you learned so far? Nakakabuti ba? Kasi pag hindi natin na true until ngayon, they will come up with many professionals who are really anxious these days. Ang tataas na nga ng mga position nila eh. No? Um, mga managers, mga BP, yet Naawa ako sa kanila that they're really suffering from depression. Pag hindi kasi na-address for how many months na or two years na, lalala yan. Parang yung kotse na 
may ilog, pero hindi kalampan, pero hindi mo inaayos, hanggang maging major depression. I will share with you, no? Uh, the, the chief executive officer of one company was referred to me by husband and wife, the child and family studies, yung aking uh, specialization, no? Uh, so, kinakantal ko sila. And yung akala namin, wala na pag-asang mag-reconcile ulit sila. Naging okay after how many months of counseling. So, nirefer nila sa akin itong CEO. Now, if it happens that the CEO is single, uh, walang pamilya ito, living alone, uh, umuwi ito ng 11 o'clock or lagpas pa ng gabi, lalakad dito ng malayo. Kasi alam mo, in the city of Makati, merong mga liblib na lalakarin mo sa EDSA para makasakay ka. Ang dating sa bahay, pag napuyat na, noodles pa ang kakainin niya. Marami na siyang nararamdaman sa katawan niya. And grab, grab and dedication. The owner of the company is saying, hindi ko na tinitignan yung pinipirmahan kong keke. Kasi napaka-dependable. Napaka, ang taas ng integridad. Why? Because this person is a financial person. Nagbabantay, nakikita niya ni Lolo ko yung company, 200,000, 400,000. So, binabantayan niya yan. Nag-suffer naman, wala siyang self-care. So, maaaring hindi niya ito nakuha, hindi siya ganun ka-resilient. And so, when she was able to come to me, major depression na siya. And I was encouraging her to take, see a psychiatrist, kasi hindi ko kaya. The psychiatrist is a doctor, to give medication na nararapat lang, no, na tama sa ano yung dosage. Pero hand in hand, we can do the therapy. Kaya lang kawawa, no? That's one example of those who are suffering right now because they they have never learned how to become resilient. Hindi sila nakakabounce back. Walang self-care, no? Yun. So, bago dumating, ang dami ng pinunta mga doctors at na specialista, cardiologists, uh, Yung, yung endocrinologist, yung internist, lahat na. Wala namang nakita. Finally, she believed in me to see a psychiatrist. Pero natatakot din na baka daw maging drug addict siya. Walang makasundong psychiatrist until finally she believed in me. That's why I have to take it. Hindi naman yung permanent, eh, i-adjust ng psychiatrist siya. Do not believe that when you go to a psychiatrist or when people are, i-stigma natin ang dumpe. Akala natin, Yung pumapunta sa psychiatrist, yung mga psychotic lang o schizophrenic, yung mga sila ulo, hindi ganun yun. Ang psychiatrist can do the medication for now so that you can relax, you can sleep well. You know, yeah, adjust, adjust yan. You could not stop the medicine kasi medyo delikado yan. It's a specialized license given to psychiatrists. Then hand in hand, kasi merong mga ganyang condition. Even the children are not exempted from being anxious. And the press. So, merong mga suicidal yan, thoughts, no? And that's, that's suicide thoughts. Binawa nila isang beses, may ha- it, they may not succeed once, many times over. Okay. And dapat alert din tayo. But when the parents are also anxious, tapos hindi na-address, naging mild depression hanggang sa game, naging major, talagang serious na yan. Okay. So, ngayon lang, when we are able to bring up our children with these tools, with the knowledge how important is this topic, then we can assure, be assured of the kind of life your children will, will have. No? They can face the world in a better way. That, that's the, it's not only the resilient child, but the optimistic child. Yan yung magpa-prosper talaga in school and wherever they go magiging pride ng parents yan. And you have to, you know, psychological stroking up yourself because you did well. Alright? So are there more? Meron pa bang question? Kung may tanong naman kayo, uh, you can ask uh, Miss Isai to give you my number. Baka nahihiya kayo or some of you may have uh, commitment, eh, baka wala na kayong oras, plus I have to be um, faithful yung time, baka, we, we know you are very busy also. So, pagka ganon, may question kayo, you can ask me. Pwede yung hingin kami si Simon number. 
Okay? So, one last na lang. Do you have, uh, ano yung natutunan ninyo? That will be very helpful to apply not only to yourself but for your kids. Hit one word lang or two. Or one sentence. Very true. So, yeah, yes, very, yeah, very true. Self, medyo nakita ko siya. Uh, yung dadagdag ko lang pala, no? uh, may benefits yung being mindful. Kung natutunan na ng bata yan, or tayo, pag na-enhance na natin yan, merong mga magagandang meditation. No? Uh, mindfulness meditation sa, sa YouTube. Among the, the benefits that you can uh, receive the mindfulness is self-control. When you teach your kids to be mindful, self-control, objectivity, hindi sila masyado magiging objective based on their perception. Uh, meron silang tolerance, they can tolerate more. Flexibility, importante. No? Uh, uh, improve concentration, mental clarity. No? Uh, emotional intelligence, may enhance further. Ability to relate to others, to oneself, no? Yung kindness, acceptance, and compassion. Um, yun. Sa, sa mga research, sinasabi nila, ma-avoid yung rumination, yung mga negative thoughts about ourselves. Sometimes it will not make us uh, find a better clip condition pagka masyado tayong maraming negative thoughts na entertain natin. Um, so, yon. Uh, and then I forgot no, to, to add to my uh, PowerPoint yung, yung parents, yung sa parenting. Very important itself here. You work so hard. No? Wala kayong inisip kundi yung what is good for your children, what is good for the family. Sometimes you forget yourself. Kaya kailangan mo rin tulungan ng sarili mo. Leave space. Magtira ka. No? Uh, then, promote your kid's sense of individuality. Yung, yung, ano yung uniqueness niya? Ipapoint out mo sa kanya. Ano yung trait niya na nakakaganda? There could be more na hindi masyado maganda. Then you, you can correct it together. Then, sige lang. Yung service that you are doing for your family, ituloy mo lang. Let them be happy and enjoy your presence. It is okay that when they fail, huwag natin palaging pinoprotektahan mo. Sometimes yung figure nila will help them to build character. Will help them to bounce back more. Natututo rin sila sa figure nila. Then, um, yung daily routine na kailangan that works for the family. What is it? Think about that. Um, uh, a lot dedicated work space. No? Huwag lahat Minsan uuwi tayo, trabaho pa rin. Minsan gabing-gabing na trabaho pa rin. Tapos iinit na ang ulo natin. Pag lumapit ang bata, hindi na maganda yung tono. Then you just, just keep your uh, children entertained. No? Wag naman yung palaging sa gaming kasi may negative effects ang gaming. Pero marami rin namang positive din. So tama yung sinasabi kahit sa TV, uh, parental guidance. Okay. So, yes. Uh, yeah, Ma'am Sonia, we have a uh, uh, share from our chat box. So, from Miss Cheryl Flores, according to her optimism, is very important for us to be resilient as a parent yes. that we can share to our child. Yes, po. Yan po. Yes. Uh, I have a client, uh, a present, who's really down. Ang baga, ma mahina magsalita, ang baga lang po, kasi tapos iyak ng iyak. And for the third time, umiiyak pa rin sila. Now, siya. Now I see yan ang depression that she needs to console a psychiatrist. But because of her effort and love for the kids, for the family, she tries her best to show optimism, to be happy. Pero talagang pagod na pagod siya. So kailangan niya talaga ng medication, sedative to relax. Pero that is right. Uh, good, good. Uh, ganda ng uh, pasok, no? Tama, yung optimism is very important. Lagi yun sa, hindi lang sa mind, pero nasa bulo sa laging nandyan yan. 
Parang it's not always the end of the world. Ang daming dahilan para mag-shoot up. Okay, uh, another? Um, we have another po uh, insight from Miss Maria Edeline. So according to her, each person we encounter every day is a result of parenting. To me, my child is my contribution to, to, to society. That's why I want to raise a good person in him. But raising a child is indeed a partnership between school and parent. This is given the fact that we as parents cannot monitor our children or child 24 by 7. Mm. Peer pressure, peer influence has a big impact yes. on the yes. child, something which is difficult to control. Mm -hmm. The techniques given today will be a good guide. Thank you so much. You so that's from Miss Edlin. Yeah, well said. Thank you. That is really very good. I struck lang ako doon when, you know, for so many years that I, I was a counselor and head of a uh, uh, counseling center, uh, yung pag-uutapan namin many times over that when parents do not come to school, sino pa naman yung magagaling na parents, sila rin yung dumadating, no? Yung iba, hindi. Um, hindi pa pwedeng you leave it all to school to be responsible for the good development of your children. Tamas dyan, no? Partnership is very important. Okay, good. Sana we can continue that. Okay. Ano pa? Meron pa ba? Sir John? So far po, iyan pa lang po ang ating... Okay. Uh, so kung wala na, uh, I, I, uh, my attention was caught by this uh, quotation about parenting, no? yung parents natin. So, the next slide. Yan. Can you see that? Do you believe in that? Parents are living God, guided, no? guided by the Spirit. Lalo na yung nag-beg tayo for the blessing, for the grace, that we, 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 we need guidance from the Holy Spirit, hindi pwedeng, i, i, ano yun? hindi pwedeng hindi ibibigay. No? So parents do everything to make their children happy and expect nothing in return. Totoo, there might be parents who would expect naman yung what could be realistic. And yet, yung tunay na nagmamahal, unconditional, may ibigay, walang ibigay, may balik, walang balik. Uh, kung continuously lumalagpak, nagdadala ng, ng problema sa bahay, mahal pa rin natin siya. Yeah. And, and, you know, being parents are gifts of God. Hindi lahat magiging parents. Maraming gusto mag-asawa, hindi nagka-asawa. Maraming gusto mag-anak, hindi nagka-anak. Pero for you to contribute to to world of uh, human beings. Ang ganda, it's not only preparing your kids to be good citizens, but good citizens in heaven someday. So with this, I would like to say thank you for your presence and for your participation. I hope you might see what has been recorded and if you want to learn more, want to ask questions, you can contact me. Thank you very much. That is really very affirming. Uh, all the best, uh, good luck, um, counseling center and the school. Uh, you are always in my heart. You are one private school that is close to my heart. I really believe in you. Uh, maganda yung mga ginagawa niyo sa parents. Continue doing that. Thank you, John. Thank you, Miss Eunice. Thank you. Uh, I'll may talk you know, because we are also part of the board of Nasa board pa rin kami ng Free Development Association of the Philippines who is holding a conference, annual conference right now. And the Miss Isai is one of the speakers. No? I will be back with them. So thank you. Ha? Uh, it is also affirming when you participate and when you, you, you share your thoughts and your experience. So uh, thank you, Miss Sonia, for that very informative, insightful, and interactive talk. So surely all of us right now have learned and acquired healthy parenting strategies and tips on building child 
resilience. So again, in case for questions or any clarifications, kindly raise hand uh, the button there and we'll call you one at a time. Or you may turn on your audio or you may type your questions on the chat box so we will let the speaker answer the question. And for those who are watching via SPCM streaming link, kindly also type your questions so we will read those. So uh, in case parents, if you have any clarifications, the, the virtual space is now yours or you may uh, raise your hand or chat your uh, questions if there are any. While waiting for their uh, questions, so I'd just like to read some of the, the appreciation. So according from Mr. Francis Billen, this forum is very helpful to us SPCM parents. They affirm that we are on the right track and at the same time emphasized some areas that we need to strengthen further. Thank you so much, though, po, Ma'am Sonia. Okay. You're so most all of welcome. Us, yes, po. All of us from Miss Joy Aguilar and Cheryl Flores. Thank you so much, po. God bless, po. Congrats. Thank you so much, po. Thank you. Uh, Sir John, yeah. is it possible yes. to take pictures? Yes, po, ma'am. Uh, after po the certification, ah, okay. I will, opo, um, we will have uh, ano po, uh, photo opportunity with you po. Tapos, okay po. At this point, so there are no questions. Uh, let me present the certificate of appreciation to our dear speaker. Let me read first. So St. Paul College of Makati, the Guidance Center, presents this certificate of appreciation to Ms. Sonia Mendoza, RGC, as research speaker for mental health webinar entitled Building Child Resilience. Given this 8th day of October 2022, signed by our guidance counselor, Ms. Vanessa Gris, uh, our academic services head, Mr. Raymond Andre Samonte, and uh, from, of course, our dear directress, school principal, Sister Mirna Espici Castante. So, uh, their parents, of course, would like to hear your feedbacks and kindly answer the evaluation through the link that is shown. And we will also send you for a while po, uh, the evaluation link on the chat box. So here it, yeah, it's, I already sent the, the link for the evaluation. So it's a tinyurl.com MH web parents evaluation. Yes, so uh, for our closing prayer, Mom Sonia, after this program, we will, we will be having their parents' opportunity to have uh, a photo shoot with our dear speaker, uh, Miss yeah. Sonia. Yes, but so uh, we have now actually come to an end of our activity. So let us part with a closing prayer. May I call Miss Eunice Basilio? And uh, let's remember that we are in the most holy presence of God and adore his holy name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son. Jesus, my Savior, we praise you for your loving devotion and justice. We thank you for the sweetness of your spirit that has been hovering over us throughout this meeting. We are grateful that even though we are different, we are one in the spirit. We thank you for blessing us with unity throughout this meeting. We are blessed by learning from the perspective of each person in this room. We thank you for the insight that we can receive from one another. As we live now, may we continue to walk in the Spirit. Mary, our mother and mother, pray, pray for us. us. St. Paul, our patron, pray for us. Father Luisa Bay and the First Sisters, intercede for us. May the love of Christ impel us now, now and, forever. and forever. Amen. So again, thank you so much for our speaker today, uh, Miss Sonia. And dear parents and administrators watching right now, and for those who are watching via SPCM YouTube uh, account, and of course, we hope that we're able to give you new learnings and insights on how to build a child resist resilience and parenting tips or strategies. So for now, uh, may I invite uh, every parent, I'll just, 
uh, and share my my screen. Okay, uh, may I invite parents to open their camera so we can have a photo shoot <laughs> with our speaker? Okay, I'll just count uh, from one to three. Okay, uh, for those who cannot open their camera, it's fine. Okay. So I think they're all now all set and ready. Um, may I invite everyone to give your best smile <laughs> for this morning? Okay, I'll just, okay, at the count of three, one, two, three, smile. Okay, one more. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Okay, thank you so much, dear parents. Thank you, thank you thank so you much so for much. your usual support. And I for our speaker, Miss Sonia, thank you so much. Yeah, you're for most those, welcome. Yes, for those who haven't yet uh, answered the evaluation, uh, I will resend it. Or in case, we will uh, provide you via email. We will send to your email address for our parents. So again, thank you so much, uh, Miss Sonia, for a very insightful, very informative uh webinar this morning and for those parents thank you so much thank you thank you very much Jane Paul thank you Sir Eunice Miss Agris thank you Miss uh, yeah Mr. John uh, yeah thank you um, Mr. Principal and the Administrator Mr. Samonte yeah thank you to all uh, salamat uh, sa assistance especially sa parents who attended our webinar uh, we also would like to say thank you to our IT here, <laughs> Sir Marlon, for fixing the, the, the techies mm -hmm. stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Sir Marlon. Yeah. Salamat sa lahat. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sir John, can you send me uh, a, a copy of this uh, group picture? Yes po, Mama. We'll send po sa inyong email. Uh, yes, regarding, yes. Yes po. We'll coordinate din po kay Miss Vanessa. So she will coordinate yeah. din po sa inyo po. Okay. So for our parents, thank you so much. You may thank now you. Leave, leave po, dear parents, the, the, the Zoom meeting. And Most God bless yeah. sa inyo pong lahat. Thank you po so much. And have a good day, everyone. Bye. Yay, bye. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay na. Uh, pwede na akong malis. <laughs> yes, po, ma. Pwede na ako ng conference namin. Salamat po, ma. Salamat po, ma. Yeah, God bless. Bye-bye, pa.